Hey everyone, Joe here. Well, the Canon EOS M5 has been officially announced. So, what I want to do in today's video is kind of go over the specifications of the EOS M5. Then at the end of the video, kind of give you some comparisons between it and the A6300 to kind of let viewers know which one they might prefer over the other. So, anyway, let's kind of go in here and hop in and look at some of the specifications of the uh, EOS M5. Okay. Now, it uses your basic SD memory cards, which would be expected SD, SDHC, and XDXC. And, of course, it uses the Canon EFM lens mount, in case anybody's not familiar with this camera yet. Now, this is a 24.2 megapixel sensor. As a matter of fact, it's the same exact sensor that was used in the Canon EOS 80D. So, if anybody that's looking to get a really good camera with really good dynamic range, and also a lot better, less noise in the shadows, this is going to be a good one to get. Now the pixel pitch on this is 3.72 micrometers, just in case anybody's interested. And the aspect ratio is the standard 3 to 2. Now it does support RAW and JPEG with Canon 14-bit RAW format. So there's a lot of colors and stuff that this can capture. And the large uh, file size, like I said, 24 megapixel, which is the standard 6,000 by 4,000 pixels. And just in case point this out, it does do RAW plus JPEG uh, simultaneous recording. Now, the one thing that the uh, M5 does have over the uh, older EOS M3 is now an electronic viewfinder. That was something a lot of people really complaining were missing on the older M series. So now Canon has included one built into the camera. The autofocus system on this new camera uses the... Uh, dual pixel AF system that was originally put out on the 70D then upgraded to the 80D also put into the 70 Mark II and most recently the 5D Mark IV. Now this is an excellent autofocus system when it comes to tracking faces or just doing any kind of video work or even portraiture. The focus points here are listed as 49 uh, focus points maximum. Now, I don't want everybody to get in that the Sony has more focus points than the Canon because they really do have two different focusing systems here. So you're, you're comparing apples to oranges. For example, with the dual pixel AF system, and I'll go over to the other tab here, it already covers 80% of the screen. So when you're using the a, uh, dual pixel AF system to take photos and stuff, you're not relying on focus points. The person can move anywhere inside that whole area and the focus system will track them every step of the way, which is really, really good if you want to you know, take photos where it locks in really good on the eyes. And if somebody moves the focus point, you're not in between any focusing points. So that's something to really want to consider. Okay, now let's go back over here again. Now, if anybody wants to know, it does have a built-in LED lamp or looking at it. And it does support all your standard metering modes. Now the shutter on this one is electronic only, and the shutter speeds are one four thousandth of a second to uh, as long as thirty seconds. And the uh, in auto mode, it will exceed that in bulb mode. The highest flash sync shutter speed is one two hundred per second. I was kind of disappointed that it went that low, but one two hundred per second is about standard. So anyway, now the video formats. Uh, it still uses the standard uh, MP4 video formats that's been used in all the other Canon cameras here. You know, the uh, MPEG-4, the H.264, and of course, all the others. Now, the video file sizes here. A lot of people were disappointed that it didn't have 4K in the camera. And But the camera does do 1080p at 60 frames per second. So, at least you can do a little bit of slow motion in 1080p. But don't expect Canon to put 4K in any of these cameras at this price range. They're still trying to push the XC11 cameras, you know, the little DSR looking 4K camera, as well as also trying to push it in their higher cinema cameras and, and also like the WinDX. So they're not going to, you know, take sales from those cameras and put it all in this camera because then nobody want to buy the bigger cameras, more expensive ones. Okay. Now it uses a uh, LCD monitor on the back, uh, 3.2 inches, with approximately 1.62 uh, million dots that dot 
dots in it. Let me get that out correctly for everyone. <laughs> And uh, it is fully touchscreen, and it does flip down and flip up, which I'll show you in just a moment. Okay, now this camera uses the Canon LP E17 battery. I know a lot of people were kind of hoping, since the battery, uh, the grip size of the battery would uh, was larger, that it would take a larger battery. But unfortunately, they're still just using the LP E17 here. However, keep in mind that this one shoots 295 shots which is a little, seems a little bit less than the uh, Sony A6300. However, if you put it at eco mode and cut down a lot of the features, you can shoot 420 shots with it. So that is something to keep in mind here. Okay, let's go over to the other tab here. Like I said, this is a 24.2 megapixel ISO range of 100 to 25,600, which, to be honest, most people won't use anything that high unless it's for surveillance or you know criminal investigations and stuff or you know people looking just to get a photo other than actually getting a quality photo and like i mentioned before this uses this uh the dual pixel af cmos system which is very very good and it's tried and true and a lot of people wish they had i know a lot of people may like the, the focusing system like in the sony's and stuff but none of them on the market currently do as good of a job as the canons do now the this camera does shoot up to uh, nine frames per second, which is really good because it can do continuous shooting at seven frames per second. Now a lot of cameras uh, advertise to do X amount of uh, shots per second, but they only do it when they're not focusing, having to do a fo focus hunt and everything. So to be able to do seven frames per second while in continuous shooting in, in a uh, servo is a huge plus. That's actually really really decent. Okay, oh, and of course, this one throw in it does use the digit 7 image processor, which has a lot of benefits and other things that can really do help. The uh, digit 7 is actually supposed to have a lot of new features to really help out and get the noise and stuff out of the photos a little bit better. Okay, now here's one of the big things that the M5 has over the Sony uh, A6300, and this is digital five axis image stabilization. So let me grab my ADD here, just kind of give you an example. So what does five axis image stabilization mean? It means you get stabilizations this way, this way, this way, and of course this way and this way. So if you add that with uh, any lens that already has you know, standard mechanical, image stabilization you're going to get really really smooth video and stuff which i think a lot of people are really really going to like here As a matter of fact i'm kind of hurt that he didn't put this in the uh, canon 80d to be quite honest and i was shocked that they didn't put this in the 5d mark 4 okay let's see if there's anything else uh now like i mentioned the EOS M5 does use the efm lens mount now currently there's only like 11 or 12 lenses natively available for the EOS M5, which is really the downside to the uh, M5 at the moment. However, Canon does make their own uh, EF to EFM mount adapter that lets you mount EF and EFS lenses onto the uh, EOS M series cameras. So, if you already have a DSLR and you already got really good quality lenses, you can adapt those over to it and everything will work perfectly just like it would on a regular camera. Now, myself personally, I had rather have a lens. If I'm buying into a smaller body system, it's normally going to be for travel and portability. I'm not going to want to put a huge big lens made for DSLR on this. So I can see a, uh, a lot of people really not looking into this system. In my honest opinion, Canon really wants to push these cameras. They're going to have to come out with some high quality prime lenses, say like a, a 50 and an 85 as well as a 70 to 200 and probably a 20 uh something like a 17 to 70 for this camera they're really going to have to push for some higher quality more pro like lenses if they're going to try to push a pro ish or enthusiast level uh mirrorless camera okay now i said i had some comparisons to do and i spent a lot of time on this and to be quite honest 
it's really hard to compare the Sony uh, A6300 and the Canon EOS M5 together because they're both really, really great cameras overall. Now, I have a few, I think, were probably the key features here. Okay. Now, the Sony A6300 does have 4K, although, admittedly, a lot of people have issues with it. It doesn't uh, record past 11 minutes without overheating. So, but... Even on the still side, the Sony A6300 is a 24 megapixel sensor also. However, it has no anti-aliasing filter. So you can end up getting a slightly sharper photos from it. So that is a plus on the uh, Sony's end. Now on the Canon EOS M5 system, uh, the plus is here. Or one, in-body image stabilization. Yes, it is digital. And that means when you're uh, filming video and stuff, you, it might crop in a little bit, so you might get slightly softer images when it's been used a lot. However, you'll get smoother overall, so it's kind of a trade-off. Anybody that's used anything like an in-body digital image stabilization before knows that it will. what it does, it kind of crops in a little bit and kind of moves the image around to kind of help reduce all that. So the next thing is uh, the M5 has over the A6300, as I can mention before, the dual pixel, uh, dual pixel autofocus. It is just a lot better, in my honest opinion. And last, the one other minor feature, which I think a lot of people really do like and prefer, is that the EOS M5's uh, touch screen, uh, back of the screen, is touch, touch screen. So if you can sit there, if you're taking a photo, for example, if you want to move around on the screen, even if your finger's up to the eye, you can touch the back of the screen and move the focus around. And of course, just doing touch focusing. It's just a really, really great to have a camera with touch screen. I know a lot of people probably don't like it or probably don't think they need it. But after you get to use it, I think you're really going to appreciate the ability to have a touch screen. But anyway, that's it of my comparison. Like I said, it's really hard for me to say which one is best here. It's really going to depend upon you, your shooting style, you know, and pretty much what you uh, prefer. You know, I can't say which is best for you, but hopefully let me give this information a little bit of comparison. It's kind of let you, uh, let you know which one you may think is best for you. But anyway, that's it for this video, everyone. I hope you liked this video. If you do, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up is always highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, be sure to subscribe. Subscribing is free. It's for you. Let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everyone. Thank you for watching.